going in. How's it going? Hey, Rick and Billy back out to Rick T Outdoor Adventures and Billy. You can't beat it, you need your daily fix, don't you? Well, I do anyway.
So on my last vid, uh, the one where we cooked the fish outside, uh, catch and cook, I had a pair of tongs, a pair of hazel tongs, which I used for moving the coals about, and even for uh, for eating and for sharing the fish with little Billy here. But uh, yeah, a few people asked in the comments about the tongs and saying they liked them. So I'll do a quick vid on how to make a pair of tongs. And there's several ways, there's quite a few ways. Well, this is a dead simple way, and it's a great little, little way of doing it, you know, when you're chilling around the campfire or whatever. Or even if you forget your cooking utensils, I mean, I'm pretty rubbish with chopsticks, but a pair of tongs, fantastic. I can knock a pair up in 10, 15 minutes, and uh, and that's me eating utensils for the trip. I can use them to move the coals about, so they're ideal for uh, Dutch oven cooking, where you're putting your coals on top of the Dutch oven. If you've got enough coals, cover him up with them. If you haven't, just turn him over. Give him a few minutes and turn him over. Always reminds me of using a Dutch oven, putting your coals on top. They're ideal for primitive cooking, where you're moving the coals around in the fire to lay your meat or your fish, your game or whatever on the coals. There's a million and one uses for them, but uh, yeah, they're great. So I'll show you how to make these. A nice, quick, good way, easy way of making them. And, uh, and great for knife skills too. The first job, I've got a piece of hazel here. Now we're looking at uh, thumb thickness-ish. Obviously a bit thicker at one end. I'm going to use this end, the slightly thicker bit. Now, you don't have to use hazel. There's a million and one other woods you can use. But uh, I find hazels, there's quite a bit of it round here, so it's one of my go to It's a great building material. It's fantastic for loads of projects. So you're not doing any aim as long as you don't take too many of these, but these, uh, these ones. So, I mean, it's like coppicing, so it's going to grow back. I've just took one here out of a bunch of about eight. So it'll grow back, you're not doing it any aim. And I'm going to use this full length. So, you know. I'm going to use a part for my tongs and then the other bits, I'm going to dry it out. It can either be bore drill spindles or, uh, you know, it could do for a walking stick. There's all sorts of things you can use them for. There's a million and one projects, but hazel's a great material. Right, we'll cut down to length. So what we need to do now is we need to split this down the middle. Yep, and there's varying ways you can do that. You can batten it, but if you batten it, your potential is it might run off. Ideally, we want a perfect split all the way down the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start my knife off. I might start it with a few taps as if I'm going to batten it. And then once I get my knife in, I'm going to use my knife to prise the wood open. Yeah, if it starts running one way, I'll prise it the other way. If it starts running too much that way, I'll prise it the other way. So it's just the same as when you're making cordage out of... Uh, spruce roots or something like that and you're trying to split them perfectly down the middle so I'm going to start off right down the middle I'm going to give it a few taps to get it started there we've got it started right so I've got it started now so I'm going to I'm going to now I'm just going to be prizing this you see how it's just splitting down just gently move the knife along so I'm not pushing down my knife because I don't want to slide down into this hand all I'm doing is giving it a little bit of pressure where it, where it moves easy and then I'm just turning my knife there, pop, so that pops open. So then, we've got with two sides there, yeah, and they've actually sp split pretty well. Quite often, you'll get a little bit of a twist in it, can you see that little bit of a twist? So quite often, you will get a little bit of a twist. You see how it's twisted there, I'm going to even that twist up.
and then because this is quite a thickish one I've got rid of that pith already there'll be a line of pith down the middle you definitely want to take it back through that now we're just working this down I'm gonna work it down so it's about whoa, four mil maybe five mil no no but yeah five mil I work it down so it's about five mil all over Right, so these ends now, these are going to be the business end. So all I'm going to do on the outside, I'm just going to make it look a bit nicer. I'm going to take a bit of the bark off like that. On the other side, same script. One like that, one like that. Right, now what we need to do now, in the middle, we're going to have to bend these over. So this middle bit, for about a third of the middle, I'm going to whittle that down even thinner. Yep, and that's going to be the bit that's going to, that's going to curl over. You start to feel the flex as you start getting, getting down to the right sort of thickness. So we're getting there, that's about right. You can always take a little bit more off if you need to. But ideally, if you've got a nice tree, similar thickness to your forearms or something like that, you can wrap it round that. Or, if there's no trees about, you can use your knee. You've got to be careful. I mean, it's perfect if you can get it without this bark cracking and peeling off. But sometimes it does, but it doesn't matter. The bark won't affect how the uh, tongs work. And you can work it to and throw. Just like that. All we're trying to do is just trying to get that bending without cracking it. And there you have it. A lovely pair of tongs. And all you have to do now to get it to keep that shape, all you do is wrap some string around here, a bit of cordage or whatever, a bit of spruce roots, a bit of grass, whatever. So it holds these together on the ends. Leave them like that on the ends. And a couple of hours, not even that, probably an hour, and it'll and it'll keep that shape. It'll stay with that shape. If you want to do it quicker. Just hang it over your tripod on top of your fire or put it on some rocks near your fire so it's getting a bit of a heat and it'll keep that shape and then that's it. That's it, that's your tongs and they'll last for ages and they'll keep that spring for a long time. But, uh, great, fantastic for eating with, fantastic for turning your coals. Good little project. So yeah, if you've never made any, yeah, or you fancy making some next time you've got some bacon to flip, have a go. All right. Well, cheers anyway. So come here, Billy. Come here. Good lad, come here. Say bye-bye. Right, so cheers from me and Billy. So look after yourselves anyway. Good to see you all again in uh, Rick T Outdoor Adventure. <laughs> and little Billy. And uh, we'll catch you again soon. All the best. ta -ra. Imagine this landscape that it once was covered in trees.
have been amazing to live here then. Especially for a bushcrafter like us lot. Absolutely amazing. Middle Dodd Fell. My lad's going to come up there in a minute. There. <laughs> going to meet him up here. Beautiful, beautiful. 